dear students in the previous lecture we have seen how the cell membrane is arranged and what is their function what are the various kinds of proteins and various other molecules that have been associated there in the cell membrane and what are their uses all these things we have studied in the previous video lecture in this lecture we will look at the various models that have been suggested so far about the functioning of the membrane okay so there are various models that have been already suggested these models includes the lipid nature of the membrane which was suggested by overton and lipid monolayer which was suggested by langmuir and lipid bilayer which was suggested by gorton and grendel lipid bilayer plus protein sheets this model is also referred as a bimolecular lipid leaflet model this one was proposed by davison and danieli i am not mentioning the year as the contribution becomes more important than the year then unit membrane model what is meant by unit membrane model which was in turn proposed by robertson then the fluid mosaic model which was an important model which was proposed by singer and nicholson then some more details about the membrane proteins are all first identified through anvin and henderson that is say look at the alpha helix how it has been arranged this one was first identified by anvin as well as henderson then the last model are currently what is the model in which the uh, membrane is functioning is referred to lipid raft model we will see the explanation for each model now separately so first one is a overton and langur model so the overton and langur when they are working on the cells of plant root hairs they observe that lipid soluble substances penetrate readily into the cell whereas water soluble substances do not so that is the one it has been shown here in this image okay something is readily penetrating however something is getting repelled that so from their studies overton concluded that lipids are present on the surface and they form some coating like thing and he even suggested that cell coats are probably mixtures of cholesterol as well as lecithin the second model was proposed by irving langmuir this model best explain about how you can able to extract the phospholipid layer and how it can be layered there for various studies okay so they studied the behavior of purified phospholipids by dissolving them in benzene and layering the samples of benzene lipid containing solution onto a water surface when they are laid as a layer the benzene gets evaporated and the left out molecules forms into the lipid film so this is the lipid film that have been formed out after the evaporation of the benzene this lipid film forms into a one molecular thick and then it is also referred as a monolayer that is a monolayer of lipid has been present there in the membrane because phospholipids are amphipathic molecules langmuir reason that phospholipid orient themselves on water in such way that their hydrophilic head face have been present there associated with water and their hydrophobic tails will be commonly protruding away from the water so this is a model that was proposed by langmuir and it is called as a lipid monolayer model the next model was proposed by gorton grendel which says that the cell membrane is made up of a lipid bilayer you can able to see two layers there this is one layer and this one is another layer so a lipid bilayer presence was first proposed there with the help of the gorter and grendel model so what this model explain gorter and grendel extracted the lipids from the erythrocyte cells these erythrocytes are red blood corpuscle cells from which they have extracted the lipids and they have used the langmuir's technique what is langmuir technique extracting the lipids and then dissolving it into benzene and layering there on the water so that is a simple method of langmuir by which he has calculated how much of space has been occupied there by the lipids so by using the langmuir's method gorter and grendel are spreaded the lipids as a monolayer on a water surface 
but to their surprise they found that the area of the lipid biofilm on the water was about twice the estimated total surface area of the erythrocytes so therefore they have simply concluded that erythrocyte plasma membrane may not be having a single monolayer but they are made up of two different layers or two monolayer that have been present together there. further gotter and grendel reason that thermodynamically non polar hydrocarbon chains of each layer may be facing inward whereas the polar hydrophilic groups of each layer will be facing outward and this is one of the important model that have explained the functioning of the membrane at a molecular level next model that explained about the functioning of the membrane is proposed by davison and danieli this is an image showing the davison and danieli model it is called as a lipid bilayer plus protein sheets containing model so this is a model which explained presence of protein there in the lipid bilayer this model is also called by another name called as a bimolecular lipid leaflet model other name for this model is protein lipid protein model or protein lipid protein sandwich model now we will look at into the other points related to that model this model was proposed by davison and danieli in the year 1935 in which they said that biological membrane consists of lipid bilayer that are in turn coated with protein on both the sides that is the reason it is referred as a protein lipid protein sandwich model so as per this model hydrophilic proteins may be penetrated there into the membrane that forms a polar pores these proteins could allow water soluble substances to cross the cell membrane the lipid interior accounted for a hydrophobic properties of the membrane i mean the presence of the protein components were best explained the hydrophilic properties of the membrane the important significance of this model is it is the one which recognizes the importance of the proteins present there in the membrane compared to the top all the previous models however this model has not gained much importance due to the reason that davison and danieli assumed the membrane is a more stable structure and they said that it's only having a very little variability and functional specificity so these are the things which are not better explained in this model that is a reason for going into the next model the next model was proposed by robertson and this model is called as a unit membrane model so this unit membrane model is again one of an important model there in the functioning of cell membrane presence of plasma membrane was first denoted there in each and every cell universally it's common the next point they have observed that most of the subcellular organel what are the subcellular organels here it refers to mitochondria endoplasmic reticulum ribosome golgi body these are all subcellular organels they are all bounded by a similar kind of membrane that is the cell membrane as well as the organelle membrane both belongs to same group of membrane so in order to confirm this thing he has performed a osmium tetroxide based staining of the cell and they were examined under a high magnification this magnification has shown clearly the railroad track like appearance it refers to two dark lines that are separated by a lightly stained central zone with an overall thickness of about 6 to 8 nanometer this pattern is seen there in the plasma membrane of two adjacent cells that are separated from each other by intracellular space so you can able to see here in this image the rail track like appearance of the membrane this is one cell and this is the other cell in the middle you can able to see the intracellular space the one membrane itself is showing as a two small lines with a whitish center which in turn refers to those two darkly stained regions there in one cell refers to head portion of the lipid bilayer whereas the whitish thing refers there to the tail portion there of a lipid bilayer thus robertson claimed that the lightly stained space that is between the two dark lines 
of the trilaminar pattern are referred to the hydrophobic regions of the lipid molecule which do not commonly get readily stained. However, the hydrophilic head regions are stained darker than. This model is also called as a trilaminar model due to the trilaminar appearance of the membrane when they are stained there by using the osmium tetroxide. Robertson suggested that all cellular membranes commonly share the feature. That is the first point. Second one, it includes actually the cell organelles also. They also share the same kind of membrane. These are the points that made to say that this model is a unit membrane model. This unit membrane model interpretation has provided a strong support or backup for the Davison and Danieli view that a membrane consists of lipid bilayer that are in turn coated in both the sides with a thin sheet of protein. The next model that explains the functioning of the membrane is the fluid mosaic model. Okay, Fluid mosaic model, it was proposed by Singer and Nicholson. As per the fluid mosaic model, the proteins are referred as an iceberg that are in turn floating on a sea of lipids. This model was proposed by Jonathan Singer as well as Garth Nicholson. There are two important key features have been associated there with the functioning of this model. It says that membrane serve as a mosaic of proteins that were in turn embedded or attached to a fluid lipid bilayer. It viewed membrane proteins in an entirely new way which has not been visualized in any other model previously. It has not viewed proteins as a thin sheets, however as a discrete globular proteins or entities that have been present within the lipid bilayer. And this model is one of the highly accepted model. Details about this model has been provided in the earlier videos itself. So kindly refer the earlier videos to find out the salient features or points related to the fluid mosaic model. The next model was proposed by Anvin and Henderson. It says that most membrane proteins compose of transmembrane segments. So this is the model that was proposed by Anvin and Henderson. Say just look at this model that is membranes protein structure related model. How the proteins have been arranged there in the membrane has been clearly explained in this model. We now look at into the details of the model. This model explains that there be a lot of transmembrane segments that anchor the protein to the membrane and hold it into a proper alignment within the lipid bilayer. If you look at this diagram, you can able to understand the transmembrane segments that could be present there in the membrane. So this is a lipid bilayer. In the lipid bilayer, you can able to see the transmembrane segments that have been present there. These transmembrane segments are commonly made up of about 20 to 30 amino acids that are represented here as a simple circles. These transmembrane segments anchor the protein. So they will be anchoring just the proteins there in the membrane. For this, they have used a protein called a bacteriorhodopsin, which is a plasma membrane protein that have been present there commonly in the archaea of the genus Halobacterium. Where its presence allows it to obtain energy directly from the sunlight. That is, sunlight based energy production is mediated through bacteriorhodopsin pigment. They have taken this bacteriorhodopsin pigment protein and they have analyzed the electron microscopy to determine the three dimensional structure of the bacteriorhodopsin and to reveal how this protein has been oriented there in the membrane. What the finding is, bacteriorhodopsin consists of a single peptide chain that has been folded back and forth across the lipid layer a total of seven times. This can be best visualized when you look at this into this particular diagram. So you can able to see the single peptide chain that have been folded across to produce a 
seven chains. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Each of these seven transmembrane segments of the protein is closely packed as an alpha helix. That is a kind of a configuration of the protein, which is in turn composed mainly of a hydrophobic amino acid. And the successive transmembrane segments are linked to each other by a short loops of hydrophilic amino acids that extend into or protrude from the polar surface of the membrane. In this diagram, if you look at it to the center, these are all hydrophobic amino acids that have been present there in the alpha helix configuration. However, whatever that have been protruding out are made up of a hydrophilic amino acids. So, this is the way in which the transmembrane helices have been present there in the bacterial order. The next one, the final model that explains about the functioning of the cell membrane was a lipid raft model. This lipid raft model is a recent model that explains about how the membrane is functioning there in the living organism. This lipid raft model started developing in the year 1970s. This model got a final shape there by the findings of Simmons and Van Meer in the year 1988. This can be defined as a small that is 10 to 200 nanometer heterogeneous highly dynamic sterol and sphingolipid enriched domains that have been serving as a compartmentalized cellular processes locations. Usually they are involved in the assembly of signaling molecule influencing membrane fluidity and membrane trafficking and in the regulation of neurotransmission. The lipid raft have been implicated to several diverse processes such as signal transduction, endocytosis and cholesterol traffic. So this is the way in which the lipid raft will be moving there on the cell membrane. You can able to see the violet color lipid raft that is carrying various molecules, the cholesterol molecule or even the sphingolipids, they are all carried there by the lipid raft. This violet color moving structures are referred as a lipid raft and this is a very recently accepted model about the functioning of the cell membrane.